What was your message to the team when he got back from the bye? You know, we just we got we got a great opportunity in front of us, but the opportunity doesn't exist unless we continue to do what we've been doing. And you know, we're we're in our position because of the process at which we've operated and taking it moment to moment and one day at a time and one game at a time. And it's not about our opponent. It's not about the teams we're about to play. It's about us and how we play and how we prepare and how we get ourselves ready to to, to go on Sunday. Do you guys do a self scout during that time? Yeah. Uh, so you you know you do your self scout. You you look at uh, future opponents. Um, and you know, you just you're you're looking analytically. You're just trying to figure out what you do well, what you don't, and how we can help our players be a little bit better. How beneficial was that for you? It's always beneficial because when you when you finally get a chance to sit down and look at it globally, it just um, you know things pop off the table. You're like, man, I didn't see that because you're going so fast week to week. And uh, so when you get a chance to take a breather and just look at it from an outside the box view, if you will, instead of a game planning view, you're just looking at yourself. Uh, you can you can see a lot. Is this the best division in the National Football League? I think so. Um, you know, you look at it top to bottom, you've got um, you've got arguably the best quarterback in the division in Josh Allen. You've got an explosive uh, football team in Miami. You've got one of the best coaches in NFL history in New England. And, uh, and then you got got our guys who are uh, every bit as talented as, as the rest of them. So it's uh, I think it's a well-balanced division. I think every team has its own flavor and what they bring. and. Uh, and it's going to be exciting to see how it plays out over the next eight. You lead the National Football League in fourth quarter scoring differential. What do you attribute that to? Obviously, it's our guys. They, uh, you know, I've said it before, they don't flinch. They really do believe, and it's true, it's the only way to operate, that if you just do your best every single play, regardless of what the score is, regardless of where you are, what quarter, you know, you're just going to, if you just do right longer, you'll have a chance to execute, especially in heightened environments. So. If you're training yourself to always do your best and treating every play like it's the last play of your career, when the environment heightens and people start panicking, you're already there. Can you feel that on the sideline? Because you've been preaching that additional 60% since training camp. Uh, you, you feel it, especially, you know, uh, one of the hardest things when, you, when we first got here last year, as soon as you're down by a score, you could just kind of feel the sideline. It just kind of. And so trying to build that up to just, you know, to rebuild confidence for our guys to let them, you know, we're good enough. You know, just stick to the plan, just stick to the game. It's, you're going to ride the ebbs and flows and it takes success. You know, we had it versus Cleveland. We came back versus Pittsburgh. Um, you know, we're in a dogfight versus Miami and, and same thing with Green Bay and uh, Denver. And you just, you see it happening over and over again. And eventually it's like, oh, shoot, we aren't out of any of these games. And so we're down 14-3 the first half with uh, Buffalo and managed to come back. And um, so, you know, you just keep that. You're not going to win them all. You don't want to live that way, but uh, it's good to know that you can. We knew that a Robert Sala led defense that's coordinated by Jeff Albrecht is going to be physical. But what has the speed infusion meant to your team? Speed kills. And, um, Albrick and his staff, uh, those guys are doing they're doing a really, really great job making sure that communication is on point. Players are doing a great job with communication and keeping it complex for an offense, but simple enough for us to be able to go execute at a high level. And the objective is to play without thought. Um, God blessed all these young men that put those helmets on with unbelievable athletic ability and speed. And you know, it's just our philosophy that as coaches, all we can do is screw them up by making them think. There's a balance on how much you give them so they can access all of their speed, all of, all of their athleticism, all of their violence. And, uh, and I feel like you know, right now with the players and, and the coaching staff, everyone's doing a really good job towing that line of complexity but not sacrificing our ability to play fast. Sunday's the Patriots. What are the takeaways from that first game? Like it always is when you play New England, if you just do right longer. Um, you know, they're, they're a team that feasts on mistakes and they, they're just waiting for you to make a mistake. And uh, it's not that you play scared uh, or timid or soft, but you just got to be 100% precision. And so when you look back at that game, you know, we, we, we kind of lost it. You get a personal foul penalty, you get some interceptions, um, and it just kind of snowballs. We weren't very good on special teams. We lose the uh, field position battle. But, um, you know, there's a lot of positives to take away from that game also. Uh, unfortunately, it's the negatives that, that kind of cost us. I wanted to ask you about special teams. They've been so good throughout the year. Uh, when you go back to that first meeting, a lot of teaching points, I imagine, for you guys going into this matchup because that's a prideful group you guys have here. For sure. And, um, you know, I think, I think we all agree that uh, New England probably got after us a little bit, especially in that unit. And, um, and it is a prideful unit. It's been playing really good football. 
uh, with the exception of that, that one football game. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's not about revenge. It's not about even talking that way. It's just, all right, we put that game to bed, focus on this game as its own championship moment. And how do we get better? How do we, how do we perform better? And uh, understanding that it's about us and how we play rather than them, you know, that's kind of been the messaging this whole year. It's, it's not about what they do, it's about how we execute. And, uh, and that's gonna be the focal point. You're dependent on a lot of young players. This rookie class is so talented. At this point in their college seasons, they've been winding down and their season would be about to end. Do you like where they're at for this final eight game stretch? Yeah, uh, we're gonna learn a lot over the next eight games. This is about when their college seasons are normally ending. Uh, if you, you know, right around Thanksgiving time, that's when their seasons are done. They're getting ready for their bowl games and they're really doing nothing for a month. So, you know, regen's gonna be very important, taking care of their bodies, veterans grabbing a rookie to make sure they're constantly on top of their bodies and keeping ahead of the chains with regards to uh, longevity and uh, but you, we love where they're at um, but again they still have eight games left thanks coach thank you